In a city at night, a man gets run over by a car. He wakes up reincarnated in another world and realizes he is now a sword embedded in a stone pedestal. A voice briefly tells him that there's a long road ahead of him and wishes him luck before disappearing, leaving him even more confused than before. When he realizes he can use the appraisal skill, he finds out he is something called an intelligence weapon, but he doesn't have a name or a wielder. He finds out that he has the self-recovery and telekinesis skills too. Suddenly, a group of goblins appear and try pulling him out of the stone. When they can't get him out and one of the goblins spits on him, the sword gets angry. Managing to pull himself out of the pedestal, he moves through the air using telekinesis and easily kills all the goblins. Instead of feeling bad for killing them, he feels the accomplishment of performing a sword's duty and even his stats increase just like in a video game. He realizes that some living beings contain crystals and that by crushing these crystals, he gains something called crystal experience, which enables him to learn new skills. Returning to his pedestal, the sword starts feeling lonely but then gets motivated, deciding his goal will be gaining new skills so he can become strong for his future wielder. Somewhere else, a black-haired Catra wishes she had the power to free herself from slavery. The next day, the sword realizes he has to spend mana to use skills. He can use telekinesis for up to three minutes before his mana runs out. Flying through the air, the sword spends the day hunting various monsters, crushing their crystals and gaining new skills. He can even use evil points to upgrade his skills and make them stronger. At sunset, the sword finds a goblin nest and kills all the goblins in front of it. Using his stealth skill, he sneaks inside and easily kills the goblin king and a goblin mage too. Crushing the goblin mage's crystal, he gains the ability to cast fire magic. The next morning, the enslaved Cactro continues working with the other slaves. When one of the slave owners starts insulting her, saying she is from a pathetic species that can't even evolve, she gets furious. Picking up a rock off the ground, she tries attacking the man, but he orders her to stop. Since she is wearing a magic slave collar around her neck, she is forced to listen to him. However, she swears she will become strong and evolve someday. At this point, the sword has defeated so many monsters that he is ready to fight a powerful boss monster called the Glutton Slime King. Locating the slime's crystal, he uses wind magic to launch himself at it and crush it. Having defeated the slime, the sword is badly damaged, but he gains the instant regeneration skill that enables him to repair himself instantly at a high mana cost. He also gains a skill called Dimensional Storage that enables him to store things in a pocket dimension. After that, the sword goes off to defeat the bosses of the East, North, and West. In order to find even stronger monsters, he advances to an area further away. Flying through the air, he doesn't see any monsters and decides to take a break, embedding himself in the earth. However, he realizes that he is in a mana-draining forest and can't use any of his skills to come out on the ground. After a month of waiting, he is desperate for anyone to find him. Nearby, the enslaved Cactro and her masters are attacked by a giant two-headed bear. While everyone is panicking, the Cactro tries attacking the bear, but it's too strong for her. Thinking how she wants to become strong, she suddenly hears the sword telepathically promising her she won't ever lose if she frees him and uses him. Mustering all her strength, the Cactro pulls the sword out and barely evades the bear's next attack. Appraising the Cactro, the sword finds out she is a 12-year-old black cat beastkin, and she doesn't have a name. Equipping the sword, the cat girl gains all his skills, including powerful sword techniques. Feeling like an experienced swordswoman now, the cat girl skillfully wields the sword and slays the bear. Once the battle ends, one of the slave owners comes out of hiding. He orders the cat girl to stop moving and she has no choice but to listen to him, since she still has her slave collar on. When the man starts beating her, the sword uses his telekinesis to break his neck and kill him, freeing the cat girl from her abusive master. The sword asks the Cactrel to become his wielder and the Cactrel tells him she would be honored to. When the Cactrel tells him her goal is to become stronger and evolve, he promises to train her. The Cactrel introduces herself as Fran and since the sword doesn't have a name, she decides to call him Shishao, which means teacher. We find out that even though Beastkin can usually evolve to become stronger, no one from the Black Cat tribe ever evolved. Fran's parents were doing their best to learn the key to evolution, but they died of overexertion before they managed to figure it out. Because of this, Fran devoted herself to becoming stronger and evolving. Getting to know her while he is teaching her, Shisho finds out that on top of being talented and a fast learner, Fran is also caring and kind. Proud of her, he makes it his life's mission to make her stronger. While they're walking through the forest, Fran hears sounds of struggle and runs towards the source. Finding a carriage under attack by goblins, she quickly saves the travelers. Using a skill called Aura Blade that emits a magic blade, Shisho defeats the rest of the goblins. Talking to Fran telepathically, Shisho advises her not to tell anyone he's a sentient sword that can talk.
The two travelers, a man called Randall and a beastkin man, thank Fran. They are traveling to a town called Alessa and ask her if he wants to join them. Even though Shishu tells her they only want her so she can protect them, Fran thinks they're not bad people and goes with them. While they're traveling, Randall explains that in the past month there was a commotion in an A-rank magic realm called Maru Plains which caused the monsters there to move closer to human territory. Hearing this, Shishu realizes that he's probably the cause of the commotion but doesn't say it. When Randall realizes Shishu and Fran don't know much about the world, he explains to them that monsters are categorized by threat levels, from the lowest G rank to the highest S rank. There are also adventurers who hunt the monsters for rewards, and they are also ranked from G to S by their experience and power. Hearing this, Fran decides to register at the Adventurer's Guild and become an adventurer. Shisho supports her, wanting to help her earn money so she can eat delicious food. Some time later, Fran, Shisho, and the others arrive at Alessa. Alessa is a lively town full of various adventurers and Shisho, decides to appraise the swords they're carrying. To his surprise, it turns out a lot of them have much higher attack power than he does, which gets him down. However, Fran cheers him up, telling him none of the other swords can use skills. At the Adventurer's Guild, a female receptionist called Nell does her best to be polite, but she actually thinks that most of the adventurers and mercenaries are a scum. When Fran approaches her, Nell thinks it's impossible for such a young child to become an adventurer. However, when Fran insists she wants to register, Nell takes her to the testing grounds for a practical battle test against an examiner. The examiner turns out to be a strong-looking ogre called Donadrand. Using appraisal, Shisho sees that the ogre is very tough, but Fran is determined to fight him anyway. Donadrand fights with a heavy axe, but his attacks are still extremely quick. He isn't holding back against Fran, but she manages to dodge or block all his attacks. After Shisho supports her using magic to increase Fran's strength and agility, she manages to cut Donadrun for the first time. However, the ogre quickly regenerates himself and continues fighting. Casting earth magic to restrain Donadrun, Shishu then attacks him with an advanced explosion spell. Jumping through the air, Fran finishes the ogre off with a powerful sword thrust. Having defeated Donadrun, Fran passes the exam. Nelthan takes her to the guild master, a wood elf called Klim. Klim asks Fran how she can use sword techniques and cast magic at the same time, but Fran tells him it's a secret. We know that Shisho is the one who is actually casting the spells and he told Fran not to reveal her techniques or weaknesses to anyone. Nevertheless, Klimt accepts her as an adventurer, since the spirits are telling him she isn't hiding anything out of male intent. Next, Fran gets to choose her class. It turns out she is compatible with lots of different classes, since Shisho is sharing his skills with her. She ends up choosing the Sword Mage class, because she thinks it sounds cool and it increases her mana and swordsmanship skill. In the end, Nell gives her a guild card and Fran is happy to have become an adventurer. Returning to the main hall of the guild, Fran sells some of the materials she gathered and gets more than enough gold to pay for a place to stay. While she's leaving the guild, a group of thugs stops her. They're discriminating against her for being from the Black Cat tribe and accusing her of getting the gold illegally. Suddenly, Nell interrupts them and slaps their leader, telling him Fran earned her money honestly. Getting angry, the thug's leader attacks Nell, but Fran saves her. When one of the thugs insults Fran one more time, she uses the Aura Blade skill to cut his legs off in an instant. The other thugs attack her too, but she easily defeats them barehandedly, using a skill called Vibration Blitz that damages her enemies from the inside. Having watched Fran's fight, everyone in the guild cheers for her. With the commotion over, Fran and Shishao leave the guild and explore the market for a store to buy armor from. Hearing their conversation, a bearded man approaches them and offers to sell them some armor. He only sells his wares to people he respects, but he saw Fran fight, and he is impressed by her. Appraising him, Shishao realizes he's a legendary blacksmith called Garrus, who we heard about before. At Garrus' shop, Fran tries out a high-quality set of armor that gives her various resistances. Garrus is prepared to sell it to her for a reasonable price because it was commissioned by someone who didn't return from a dungeon. Satisfied, Fran decides to buy the armor. Analyzing the swords in Garrus' shop, Shishu again notices they have higher attack power than he does. Garrus reveals that he has God Sight, a special skill that allowed him to see that Shisho is an intelligence weapon, even though he is blocking anyone's appraisal. Deciding to trust Garrus, Shisho starts talking to him telepathically. Garrus explains that even though other swords might have more attack power, Shisho has amazing mana conductivity that drastically increases his attack power when he coats himself with mana. He thinks that a divine blacksmith must have forged him, since regular blacksmiths wouldn't know how to create an intelligence weapon. Divine blacksmiths are legendary blacksmiths who can create extraordinary weapons and there are only five of them recorded in history. Shishu asks Garrus to make a scabbard for him and tells him he can use some of the materials he and Fran gathered, 
Seeing all the materials, Garrus tells him he can make even better equipment than what he sold them if they wait for one month. Shishio and Fran decide to make a deal with him. Leaving Garrus' shop, Shishio and Fran buy some new clothes and cooking supplies. Having bought everything they need, they look for an inn. Even though their room in the inn seems normal to Shishio, Fran has having never stayed in such a comfortable room. She is grateful to Shishio because so many good things have been happening to her since she met him. Shishio promises to continue taking care of her and starts thinking he came to this world just so he can meet her. Later, Fran gets hungry and Shishio uses telekinesis to make delicious fried chicken for her. Fran thinks it's incredibly delicious. Before they go to sleep, they decide to use Shishio's Evo points to max out his recovery magic. However, in the middle of the conversation, Fran falls asleep. The next day, Fran and Shishio gather some plans for a G-rank quest. Shishio is enthusiastically teaching Fran about the various plants, but she isn't really interested. Suddenly, she hears sounds of battle from somewhere. Nearby, three adventurers are desperately fighting a group of 15 goblins, including some powerful hub goblins. Following the sound, she heard Fran find the battlefield and kills the goblins using sword techniques, while Shishu attacks them with earth bullets. During the fight, Fran levels up to level 4. After the battle, Fran approaches the surprised adventurers and heals them all with a high-level skill called Circle Heal. One of the adventurers realizes that the appearance of hot goblins might be the sign of an approaching goblin stampede. When a goblin king mates with a goblin queen, their offspring will be hog goblins, which reproduce so fast, they can form a huge horde quickly, which makes the horde a high-level sea threat. Such a goblin stampede usually invades human territories for food, and they can even devastate large cities, which means Alessa is in danger. Suddenly, a single goblin appears. He blows into a flute to give a signal to nearby goblins, but Fran quickly kills him. She tells the adventurers to go back to Alessa while she takes on the goblins, she wants to try defeating the goblin horde as training and Shishao supports her. When a group of goblins appears, Fran starts fighting them until she levels up all the way to level 8. However, soon goblin archers and mages join the battle and the number of goblins increases dramatically. Even when she gets hit by an arrow, Fran refuses to give up and wants to push her limits to become stronger. In the past, he was doing his best to protect her, but Shishio now realizes that Fran doesn't want to depend on others and is determined to gain true strength. While Shishu uses recovery magic to support her, she continues fighting the goblins and hobgoblins. By sunset, the battle ends with Fran having defeated more than 100 goblins and reached level 12. A group of adventurers from Alessa arrive. Seeing how many goblins she has slayed by herself, the adventurers realize Fran is on the level of a D-ranked adventurer already. Fran found a goblin nest, but one of the adventurers tells her it's actually a dungeon. Since the guildmaster asked to speak to her, Fran meets up with Klimt and Donadrand. Realizing it's very likely a goblin stampede is approaching, Klimt intends to assemble a party of adventurers to conquer the dungeon and prevent the goblins from attacking. He wants Fran to join the party and immediate light promotes her to an F-ranked adventurer because of her achievements. Visiting Garrus, Fran and Shishao have him repair Fran's equipment. Shishao also buys one of the magical crystals Garrus used for repairing it. Fran asks Garrus about dungeons and he tells her they are trials created by the god of chaos to test humankind. The God of Chaos makes a dungeon core randomly appear in the world and the creatures closest to it become dungeon masters and create a maze around it. Those who conquer a dungeon usually find precious minerals and magic weapons at the end of it as a reward from the God of Chaos. After their equipment is repaired, Fran takes a bath and comes across Nell. Talking to her, she finds out Thatton, a ranked adventurer called Amanda of Haridi, is the ace of Alessa's Adventurer's Guild, but she's not present because she's investigating the Maru Plains. When Fran asks Nell what the god of chaos is like, Nell tells her all about the gods. It is said that the world was created by ten main gods, among which is the god of chaos. After the gods created natural phenomena such as the sun, fire, and beasts, their children continued creating the world. In the end, the goddess of chaos spread chaos to make the people strive for progress and prevent the world from falling into stagnation. There was also a god of war, but he was so greedy for power that he turned evil. He challenged the other gods to a fight, but he was defeated and cut into pieces, which were then sealed. However, the seals couldn't contain all of him, so goblins, orcs, and other monsters were born from the parts that weren't sealed properly. Having overexerted herself both physically and mentally, Fran falls asleep. The next day, Fran and Shishio visit Garrus and pick up Shishio's new scabbard before heading towards the dungeon with the other adventurers. Donadrun is the party's leader, and he tells everyone the primary objective is defeating the goblin king and queen to prevent the goblin stampede. While he's still talking, a horde of goblins unexpectedly charges out of the dungeon and causes chaos among the adventurers. 
Saving adventurers on her way, Fran uses an advanced skill called Midair Jump to reach the dungeon's entrance. Shusho then uses explosion magic to clear a path inside. While the other adventurers continue fighting the goblins outside, Fran charges into the dungeon. After a while, Donadrun and the adventurers manage to enter the cave. Encountering a group of goblins, Fran and Shisho advance quickly, killing only the ones who have crystals with useful skills. Using the skill Peril of Fought, Shisho casts two powerful fire spells at once to eradicate the rest of the goblins. Venturing deeper inside, they encounter two ha goblins and follow them towards the Goblin King. After a while, they find the Goblin King and the Queen guarded by more goblins. Shisho's plan is first distracting the goblins with magic and then letting Fran defeat the King and Queen. However, it turns out Shisho's fire spells were so powerful, they defeated everyone at once, robbing Fran of the opportunity to kill the king and queen like she wanted. However, they realize the Goblin King wasn't the dungeon master, since the dungeon didn't disappear. They find a large red gate and go through it. On the other side, a swarm of giant but weak ladybugs attacks them. While Fran is slashing the bugs into pieces, Shisho finds a leader Buggo is summoning the others infinitely. He tells that to Fran and she jumps into the air and kills the leader, ending the bug's onslaught. After the battle, Fran levels up to level 17. Finding yet another gate, Fran and Shishou sense a strong magic presence. In order to prepare for the fight, Shishou casts buffs that increase Fran's resistances, regeneration, and stats. Shishou promises Fran that he will cook curry for her if they make out alive. Motivated by food, Fran promises she won't die and opens the gate. On the other side, a winged demon welcomes them. In a lesson, Nell is worried about the party in the dungeon and Klimt assures her they should be fine since the dungeon is newly created and the monsters there shouldn't be very strong. In the deepest part of the dungeon, Shishu appraises their new enemy and finds out it's an immensely powerful greater demon. The demon taunts Fran, but he is impressed she was able to reach him. It turns out a rare goblin with very low stats summoned the demon and he is the actual dungeon master. However, the demon doesn't actually listen to him because he annoys him. The powerful demon takes out a sword and Shishou recognizes it's powerful. He realizes he has to power himself up with mana to block the demon's fierce attacks without breaking. Using the Aura Blade skill, Fran knocks the demon's sword out of his hands and jumps into the air to attack him. However, the demon uses shadows to call his sword into his hand instantly, so he blocks her and throws her onto the ground. Suddenly, he appears behind Fran and cuts her hands off. Using telekinesis, Shishao flies into the air, saves Fran from the demon's next attack, and casts a firewall spell. He quickly heals her hands with recovery magic and tells her everything will be fine. As the demon is disappearing and reappearing, Shishao realizes he is using Fran's shadow to move around. Predicting when he will appear, Fran jumps into the air and hits him with a skill called Sonic Wave combined with Poison Fang. However, the demon is unfazed and attacks her with a blast of dark magic. When the demon realizes Fran's sword techniques and agility are better than his, he hits her with a spell called Skill Taker. Announcing that he has taken away her swordsmanship skills, he attacks her. However, Fran manages to block his blow and continue fighting. It turns out the demon can't steal her skills after all, since they're actually skills Shishao shared with her. Getting bored, the demon says he wants to get the fight over with so he can have fun destroying Alessa. Charging a powerful ball of dark magic, the demon launches it at Fran. Fran manages to barely dodge it, but she's exhausted. Shishu wants her to run away, but Fran refuses. She understands that she's no match for the demon, but she doesn't want to let him destroy Alessa, where her new friends are. Shishu realizes that Fran doesn't only want to become stronger for herself, but also because she wants to protect others. As her teacher, he doesn't want to hold her back and supports her. While Fran continues dodging the demon's increasingly reckless and destructive attacks, Shishu is thinking of ways he can defeat him. Suddenly, he remembers that Donadron told him that when the Dungeon Master is defeated, all the monsters inside the dungeon perish. Changing their target to the rare goblin, Fran and Shishao start bombarding him with fire spells, but the greater demon protects him with a barrier. Shishao tells Fran he realized that after casting a powerful spell, the demon needs three seconds to recharge his mana. The two of them come up with a strategy. After the demon casts a spell, Fran throws Shishu towards the rare goblin. Suddenly, Shishu quickly changes his course and takes the demon by surprise. He launches himself towards the demon's crystal, but the demon manages to catch him in the last second. However, Shishu channels all this magic and after a struggle, breaks through and pierces the demon, crushing his crystal. Watching all this, the rare goblin is in disbelief. He prepares to summon another demon, but Fran kills him, deactivating the dungeon core. Just before Donadron and the other adventurers arrive, Shishu takes the demon's sword into his dimensional storage. 
Hearing that Fran defeated both the Dungeon Master and a greater demon, everyone is impressed and Donadrin is relieved she's alive. However, he starts scolding her for not listening to him that it's dangerous to act on her own. As they're all going back to Alessa, Shisha realizes Fran is already level 25, more than double the level she was before she entered the dungeon. Fran is tired from Donadrin's lecturing him, but Shisha reminds her he's going to make curry for her, and she cheers up again. Fran gains the skills Master Sword Art and Master Sword Technique, together with Elemental Sword, which enables her to enchant her sword with various elements. Having absorbed the Greater Demon's Crystal, it also gains Skill Taker. Later, Fran meets Klimt in his office and he thanks her for defeating the Greater Demon. She left the demon's body for the guild to take, but Klimt is curious as to where its crystal went. Fran tells him it was destroyed when she killed the demon and Klimt doesn't entirely believe her, but since the spirits are once again telling him she has no real intentions, he lets it slide. Suddenly, a large blonde knight enters the room and accuses Fran of lying. The man introduces himself as August Olsen, the vice captain of the Alessa Knights, and reveals that he has a unique skill called Essence of Falsehood. Shishiro praises him and notices he is exceptionally weak. He finds out that Essence of Falsehood allows one to see through others' lies but also make their own lies more convincing. August wants to imprison Fran for lying to Clint, but Clint refuses to let him. He realizes that August deliberately didn't let his knights join the dungeon expedition because he hates adventurers, but August denies it, wanting to calm August down. Fran gives him some goblin horns as a gift, but August is disgusted and throws them on the ground. Fran is furious and wants to kill August, but Shishio calms her down. He suggests they try out Skill Taker on August, since he's a despicable person. They use the skill to take away August's essence of falsehood and court etiquette skills without him noticing. Fran tells August she is 100 years old and asks him if she's lying and August can't tell, because she is using essence of falsehood, since she stole this court etiquette skill too. He starts scratching himself, picking his nose and farting loudly. Confused, he goes back home. Clint reveals that August is from a major noble family, so Clint can't be too hard on him. Finally, he announces to Fran that she is getting promoted all the way to D rank for her accomplishments. Fran and Shisha follow Mel to the Adventurers Guild, where she gives them their reward together with a bonus. When all the other adventurers congratulate her or thank her for helping them in the dungeon, Fran listens to Shishu's suggestion and treats the whole room to a drink. The next day, Fran and Shishu go to a place by the river to make some food for their travels since it doesn't spoil or go cold when stored in the dimensional storage. After making some hamburger steaks and storing them, they start cooking Shishu's promised curry. It turns out delicious and it instantly becomes Fran's favorite food. A week later, Fran continues doing low-ranked quests while she's waiting for Garrus to finish her new armor. One day, she finds out that August disgraced himself before royalty and his father got angry at him, which made him fall into despair. Shkisha realizes August is missing his manners now because they stole his court etiquette skills. While the two of them are walking through town, Shishu notices they are being followed by someone. They climb to a desolate roof in order to lure the stalker out. When the stalker shows himself, it turns out to be August who is now almost bald and looks completely disheveled. He thinks Fran cursed him and it's all her fault his life is ruined. August then calls forth a man called Juran, and a badly scared beastkin appears. Seeing him, Fran gets upset, since she recognizes that he is from the Blue Cat tribe. She reveals that the Blue Cats deceived the Black Cats hundreds of years ago, reducing them to the lowest of all beastkin tribes. Since then, they have been tracking the Black Cats down and selling them to slave traders. Clashing with Juran, Fran remembers being attacked by the Blue Cats many times while she was traveling with her parents. Shishio praises Gurin's sword and sees that it's even stronger than the greater demons. Gurin throws Fran to the ground and describes to her in detail how he killed and tortured a black cat just like her. Fran freezes in fear before her terrifying opponent, but Shisha reminds her that she is powerless like she was before she met him. Regaining her composure, Fran cuts Gurin's hand off with such speed that he didn't even notice it. She then quickly steals his sword and puts it into her dimensional storage. Before the shock, Gurin can do anything. Fran starts cutting his limbs off one by one, making him fall to the ground and scream out in pain. Shishio offers to do the killing blow for her, but Fran is determined to do it herself. She considers it her responsibility to kill the enemy of her people and show the other black cats that they can become strong too. Shishio understands her, but he wants to share her burden, so he makes her promise that she will use him whenever she takes a life. Juran still can't believe a black cat has defeated him and Fran cuts his head off, seeing Fran defeating Juran. August starts panicking. Suddenly, a small water spirit approaches Fran and a voice tells her she can't kill August. Following the spirit, they arrive at Klim's office. 
Clint tells them that August was placed under house arrest for offending royalty, but he stole a large amount of money and ran away. Luckily, Fran's fight revealed where August is and a band of adventurers managed to capture him and bring him back to his father. For finding August first, Fran gets a reward and even a bonus if she keeps the incident a secret. While they're leaving Clint's office, Fran runs into a female elf. Seeing Fran, the elf suddenly tells her she is her mother and hugs her. Fran does her best to push her away, but the woman is too strong for her. It turns out the woman is Amanda of Heredy, the famous Iraq adventurer and the guild's ace. Appraising her, Shisho sees that she is a half-elf and her stats are extremely high. Amanda knows who Fran is since she heard about her conquering the dungeon. While Amanda reports to Clint, Fran leaves. The next day, Fran keeps coming across Amanda everywhere she goes, in the forest, in the library, and in town. Amanda is following Fran so persistently that she ends up complaining to Nell, but Nell tells her that Amanda isn't a bad person, even though she is a little weird. She has been running an orphanage since she was very young and the gods even gave her the title Guardian of Children. Amanda joins them and asks Fran to call her mama, but Fran refuses. Nell then tells Fran that Klimp wants to see her again. When Fran arrives in Klimp's office, he shows her some crystals he collected when he was an adventurer. On the condition that Fran accepts his request, he offers to give her two of them. Haggling with him, Fran manages to convince Klimp to give her five crystals instead of two. Klimp's request includes joining a party of adventurers and investigating the spider's nest, a dungeon near Olesa. A lot of adventurers are skeptical about Fran's rapid promotion to a D-rank, so Klimt wants her to prove her strength to them and put an end to the rumors that he favors some adventurers more than others. If she completes his request, he will also give her a pass to enter a dungeon in Ulmut. Thinking about it, Shishu tells Fran she should accept. Suddenly, Amanda barges in, saying she wants to go with Fran because most of the other adventurers are going to be men. Since Klimt can't stop her, he allows her to go too. Clint reveals that the spider's nest has actually been cleared already, and they only need to collect the materials that spawn there. Since a dungeon without a dungeon master will use its core to generate monsters and valuable crystals all by itself, the guild periodically sends its adventurers to retrieve those valuables. When they return to their room at the inn, Shishu absorbs the crystal Clint gave them and gains 45 evil points and a variety of water-based skills. The next day, Fran and Shisho meet up with the other adventurers. It turns out the expedition into the spider's nest is also a promotion test for two rank parties. A blonde man called Cruz is the leader of the expedition together with a mage called Rig and a warrior called Izel. There is also Krad, the leader of an E-rank party called Dragon's Roar who is determined to pass the test and raise his party's rank. An elf introduces himself as Furion, the leader of the second E-rank party called Forest Eyes. In the end, Amanda and Fran introduce themselves too. Hearing Fran's name, Krat approaches her and accuses her of getting promoted to D-rank just because the guild master is favoring her. Fran denies this, but Krat doesn't believe her. Cruz then tells everyone their objective, entering the dungeon, eliminating the monsters in their way and retrieving the crystals generated by the dungeon core. While they're traveling, Krat keeps trying to sneak up on Fran and attack her, but he fails every time and ends up getting scolded by Amanda. At sunset, the party makes a campaign they sit around the fire, Krat approaches Fran and challenges her to a fight to prove that she is a D-rank adventurer. Shishu tells her not to get involved, but when Krat insults the sword, Fran gets angry and agrees to fight him. Preparing their weapons, they start the fight. Krat is overly confident and immediately charges at Fran with his spear. However, he is surprised when Fran blocks every single one of his regular and even special attacks. Soon, Krat gets tired and Fran knocks him to the ground with a kick, winning the fight. Having watched them, Amanda asks Fran to have a practice duel against her too. Fran accepts but only under the condition that Amanda will stop bothering her if she wins. Amanda accepts and tells her that her own condition will be Fran having to call her mama if she loses. Before they start, Fran asks Shishu not to assist her because she wants to fight Amanda with her own strength and see how she fares against an rank. Amanda turns out to be skillful with a whip and Fran has to use all her power just to dodge her lashes. Whenever Fran gets closer to Amanda, she gets pushed away. Announcing that she is going to get more serious, Amanda channels magic into her whip and starts using incredibly powerful whip techniques. Using wind magic to increase her speed, Fran launches herself at Amanda, dodging her attacks. She reaches Amanda, but the elf protects herself with a wind spell. Not being able to reach her with her sword, Fran activates a flare blast spell that causes a huge explosion of flame. However, Amanda appears out of the flames unharmed, having protected herself using some kind of spell. Fran doesn't want to give up, but she faints from exhaustion. Worried, Amanda runs up to her and heals her. It turns out Amanda has a unique skill called Spirit's Affection that can nullify an attack completely. 
Two hours later, Fran wakes up lying on Amanda's lap. She admits that Amanda is strong and Amanda acknowledges her too. Suddenly, Fran remembers that she has to call Amanda Mama now, but can't bring herself to say it. Amanda hugs her and admits she is teasing her too much, and that she knows her mother is still in her heart. She says she doesn't expect Fran to trust her right away, but that she will always be there for her. The next morning, Cruz leads everyone into the spider's nest. We find out that the night before, a mysterious person holding a red vial entered the dungeon. On the first floor of the dungeon, the adventurers find ancient ruins. While they're exploring, Amanda tells Fran that this dungeon used to be popular when she was young. Many adventurers would die exploring it and leave their children behind. Because of this, Amanda opened an orphanage with the help of the people in the city. At that moment, a group of weak monster skulled trap spiders appear and Crad's party eagerly attacks them. The other adventurers join in and they quickly defeat all the spiders. Since Amanda could defeat all the monsters in an instant, she only acts as an observer. Reaching the second floor, the adventurers are faced with various insect-type monsters, but they manage defeating them too. On the third floor, everyone enters a large empty room that they soon find out it's full of traps and monstrous slugs. Having disabled all the traps, Isa leads everyone onwards. While all that is happening, Amanda is explaining to Fran that skills and magic aren't the same. While skills are something one has to gain practical experience to use, magic is an ability used by manipulating one's inner mana. Fran can use all four basic elements of magic, earth, water, fire, and wind in addition to inferno, an advanced form of fire magic. There are also complex forms of magic such as thunder and life magic. If Fran gets better at wind and fire magic, she can acquire thunder magic. After they defeat the spiders on the third floor, the party moves to the fourth one. Down there, there are less monsters and everyone can take a rest. Fran gives Amanda some curry as thanks for teaching her about magic, and they happily continue talking. On the fifth floor of the dungeon, there are more spiders than ever, but everyone works together to defeat them like before. Cruz announces that the next floor is the last one, and that the dungeon core is there. Once they gather the valuable crystals around it, the investigation and the test will end. Reaching the sixth floor, everyone is surrounded by spiders and insects. However, instead of the weak trap spiders, the stronger trick spiders appear. Realizing this, Cruz is surprised since only trap spiders were supposed to appear in the dungeon. Since trick spiders are too much for E-rank parties to handle, Cruz orders everyone to retreat. Two people from the Dragon's War Party called Victor and Bart get affected by a confusion effect and they start running around in a panic. Activating a trap by accident, they end up bumping into Fran and causing all three to fall into a teleporter trap. Since the trap leaves all weapons behind, Shisho doesn't teleport with them. Waking up in the darkness somewhere, Fran realizes Shisho isn't with her. Victor and Bart also wake up and the three of them are faced with a trickster spider, which is a gigantic spider with a woman's torso sticking out of it. Meanwhile, Shishu uses all the skills he can to detect Fran, but he can't find her at all. In the unknown room, Fran feels helpless and desperate since she can't use magic or skills without Shishu. Activating various traps, the trickster spider attacks Fran and the others while they do their best to stay alive. Meanwhile, Amanda and the others split into three groups to look for Fran. Amanda ends up going alone and she carries Shishu with her. Thinking about ways to help Fran, Shishu gets the idea to use Kin Summon and Summon a Familiar to look for Fran. Even though he's worrying about Amanda's reaction when she learns his secret, Fran's safety is his priority. When Shisho uses all his mana to summon a powerful Onyx wolf, the wolf somehow ends up turning against him. Surprised, Amanda prepares to attack the wolf, but Shisho reveals himself and tells her he summoned it. He convinces Amanda to lead the wolf to him, telling her he is Fran's companion and that he is trying to find her. It turns out the Onyx Wolf considers Shishout's enemy because he channeled too much mana into him, which is making him suffer. Amanda suggests he gives the wolf a name to strengthen his bond with it and calm it down. Once Shishout names the wolf Roshi, the wolf regains its reason and evolves, expanding its mana capacity and becoming friendly. Almost immediately, Roshi detects Fran's scent and takes Shishu with him, while Amanda runs after them. In the strange room, Fran is lying on the floor, poisoned and surrounded by spiders. She feels as weak and useless as she felt before she met Shisho. When she loses consciousness, she remembers Shishu telling her she is strong and that she can't lose. Opening her eyes, Fran gets her strength back and rescues Victor and Bart, crushing spiders with her bare fists and legs. Refusing to give up, she announces that she is Fran and that she is a black cat who will evolve. When she jumps into the air to punch the trickster spider, Shisho arrives, launching himself at it and destroying most of his body. While Shisho and Fran have a happy reunion, the trickster spider manages to get away. 
Shisha quickly heals Fran and tells her he is proud of her, which makes her happy. Suddenly, Amanda leaps at Fran and hugs her, relieved she is alright. Shishao introduces Fran to Yurushi, and she immediately takes a liking to him. Deciding to trust Amanda, Fran asks Shishao if she can tell her about him. Concluding that Amanda is a good person, he lets her and Fran explains everything. Hearing that an intelligence weapon actually exists, Amanda gets excited and she becomes fast friends with Shishao. Using a recovery spell on the unconscious Victor and Bart, Fran and the others take them with them. Arriving at the place the adventurers agree to meet, they don't see anyone there, but a glowing white owl approaches them. In the middle of the spider's nest, everyone except Cruz, Crad, and Izel have been either caught in a web or poisoned. Suddenly, Fran and the others arrive to rescue them. Using dark magic, Rushi frees everyone from the spider webs. Fran and Amanda kill all the spiders using fire magic and wind magic. The white owl called Tarua led them to the adventurers, and it turns out that Furion was the one who sent it. When the trickster spider appears again, Fran is determined to get her revenge. Tarua casts a recovery spell on everyone and they're ready to fight again. While Cruz and the others fight the trick spiders, Fran approaches the trickster spider, having used the elemental sword skill to coat Shisho in fire magic. However, the trickster spider manages to attack Fran and Urushi, making them lose balance. Seeing this, Amanda remembers her past. She once took care of two black cat children called Flamia and Kinnan. She taught them how to fight so they can protect themselves, but they ended up dying. With that in mind, Amanda casts a powerful storm spell and eradicates the spider trickster completely together with its crystal. Amanda runs towards Fran, but Fran is annoyed because she wanted to get revenge by herself. With the crisis over, Cruz takes everyone to the room with the dungeon's core, which is full of valuable crystals. While everyone is collecting the crystals, Cruz tells them they have to keep everything that happened a secret. Examining the core, Izel notices that the dungeon's settings haven't been changed to spawn only trap spiders like they were supposed to. Having left the dungeon, the adventurers gather around the campfire. When Fran tells Amanda her goal is to evolve, Amanda tells her she knew some other black cats that said the same thing. However, they died before they were able to achieve their goals. Amanda supports Fran, but she tells her never to push herself too far. The next day, everyone returns to Alessa to seeing Fran, Clint congratulates her on clearing the spider's nest and tells her she has done enough to prove that he hasn't promoted her because of favoritism. Keeping his promise, he tells her he will prepare a permit for her to visit the dungeon in Ulmit. He admits it's going to be lonely after she leaves and Fran thanks him for everything he has done for her. Fran and Shisho visit Garrus, who has finished Fran's new equipment. Garrus calls her new arm in the Black Cat series and tells her it's much better than the one she is wearing. Since Garrus is going to move to Ulmit soon, he tells them to come look for him when they arrive. The next day, Fran prepares to leave and all her friends wish her a tearful goodbye, even Crad, who used to hate her. Fran promises to Amanda that she will get stronger and won't lose to her the next time they fight. Amanda is a little sad, but she tells her she is looking forward to it. Before they leave, Shishi reminds Fran that she never called Amanda Mama. Fran calls Amanda Mamanda, and Amanda then remembers that the black cat she used to take care of in the past called her by the same name. It turns out the black cats she took care of, Flamia and Kinnan, were actually Fran's parents. In Klimt's office, Furion visits him and we learn that he is Klimt's nephew who was working undercover for him. It turns out that an adventurer used evolution potions on the spiders in the spider's nest. He admitted to working with August and was arrested. Klimt also asks Taro what he thinks about Fran and Taro, tells him that Fran doesn't have any evil in her heart. Klimt concludes that Fran is just an extraordinary black cat. Traveling towards Ulmut, Fran and Shishu look forward to their new adventures.